just finished my new student orientation for CUNY SBS, which is where I'm headed to college for hopefully the next, what, two years? So in my last video, I talked about dropping out of four different colleges after I got my associate's degree at BMCC. So I am no stranger to CUNY schools. However, this one's a little bit different because it offers online bachelor's and master's programs. And that's perfect for me because I'm currently working a 40 hour a week job. I cannot be part time at my job or anything like that because I have bills to pay. We are in a recession. Times are hard. So an online program is going to be what I need in order to finish up my bachelor's. Finally, I'm getting a bachelor's in communications and media. I will be documenting my journey with CUNY SBS just in case anyone is interested in attending as well. Or if you just want to know what my day to day life is going to be looking like. I live a child free life with my husband and he also works a full time job. So it is going to be a little bit hard juggling school work and my other work, which is these three YouTube channels, but I'm going to make it happen. Sacrifices must be made. There was a new student orientation and it was all done online. It was a series of videos that offer resources for how to use Blackboard, how to create blog posts, how to sign into CUNY for pretty much basics. I'm sure that serves as a refresher. There were also a couple of assignments that we had to create. Like there was an Excel sheet where they wanted us to fill in our hours of leisure time, hours that we'll be spending dedicated to working or to schoolwork, homework, as a way of showing how much time you should be dedicating based on the number of courses you're going to be taking. So I'm taking two summer classes. I'm going to put them right here. I'm not the best with Excel, so I was definitely a little bit nervous about giving in that assignment, but you need to complete every single assignment in order to get your little certificate that shows that you've completed the program and you're ready for your first day, which I believe is going to be either the 29th or the 30th of May. And I'm currently filming this on the 25th. I'm expecting two different planners to arrive and those will help aid me in hopefully organizing my life. I don't have the best track record when it comes to keeping up with planners but now more than ever the stakes are high. I'm getting a plum planner and a happy planner. I would have stuck just to a happy planner but at the time they hadn't released the collection that I wanted. I didn't even know it was coming out so once they released it I was like oh darn I already purchased one from the plum planner that I can't return because it's personalized. So I'm gonna have two different planners. One is cuter than the other but it is what it is. Once they arrive I will unbox them. But back to CUNY SPS. So there's also a bunch of little discussion boards where you can introduce yourself to everyone and get to know everyone. Some of us will be taking classes together which I thought was really cute that they're trying to create the sense of community. I have taken online classes before with Penn Foster but this is going to be a little bit more different. That one was definitely go at your own pace whereas this one does have some deadlines for assignments, homework, you know, once I have the syllabus, I will be printing it out just so that I can have access to it because I like to have some things physical instead of just all digital. Like if I'm already taking all my classes online, I want to make sure that I'm balancing that out with some tangible items that I can touch because sometimes I do better. Like I'm someone who writes my notes because I just do better than just typing them up. Sometimes I do a combination of both. So we'll see on that first week what method works best for me. I think what I might do depending on the time that I have, is take notes on my laptop and then transfer them over into notebook versions so I can have that with me on the go. Especially because I have a lot of downtime at my job, I want to have something that has a bunch of information that I could look over, memorize, kind of, you know, focus on. I did a school supply haul on my main channel, so if you're interested, I will have that linked because I'm super excited to have cute school supplies. That's definitely a big motivator for me. I think another reason I wanna kinda document my experience with CUNY SBS is because there's, there's not a lot of videos about it. I saw a couple that are directly on CUNY SBS YouTube channel, but I figure we could use some more content about whether this program is gonna be worth it or not. They also have some master's programs like I mentioned, and I am very curious to see. Well, it just kinda depends how I feel I still have plenty of time. Like I said, when I got my new job, I've just kind of been in a different industry. So I'm trying to see how much I enjoy it and if this is going to be my future career path. Because CUNY SBS has a museum studies master's program that I've been thinking about. But then there are other CUNY colleges that also have programs within that same field or the field of art that I'm kind of like, mm, should I go through this? You know, I feel like majoring with anything in art, like other than fine arts, that's obviously a talent. But like art history and stuff like that, I feel like it gets a bad rep and I'm not sure if 
it's worth doing and also that brings me to the financials the one thing i'm worried about attending cuny sbs is whether i could afford it i have applied for financial aid and tap but a lot of it is still pending so i am worried because on paper now i'm married so when i was filing for fafsa and tap they asked me if i was married which i am i got married 2022 but then they were asking for my tax returns from the year of 2021 when I wasn't married. So to me, it didn't make sense for them on the next page to ask for my husband's information, like his tax returns and stuff, when we were not married in 2021. We were married in 2022. So that was super frustrating. And I'm worried that that's going to impact my financial aid for school. Because on paper, yes, my husband does make a lot of money. He makes more than I do. But that money is tied up in other places. Both me and my husband have gone on a journey of kind of paying up our debt and, and getting ourselves financially stable. But because we're doing that, because our resources are getting pulled into one direction, it leaves very little wiggle room for other things. So it's not feasible for me to pay for my classes or for him to help me because our money is tied up in other places along with other expenses, along with the fact that I live in New York City, one of the most expensive cities in the world. I believe that I will get something, but I don't want to jinx it. I don't want to speak too soon about it. I am currently on a payment plan to pay for my summer classes. And it's 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 more digestible payments, I guess you can say. But to me, it's still a lot of money. It's like 650 every payment. <laughs> and that's still a lot, especially because I'm like, getting used to getting paid bi-weekly. At my old job at Harry Potter New York, I was getting paid weekly and it was amazing. And I know it's still the same thing. It just requires a little bit more budgeting and I've been doing okay, but I just feel more comfortable and more secure knowing that I'm getting money every week as opposed to every two weeks. So fingers crossed the financial aid stuff goes well. Otherwise I will have to, like if I'm not going to get financial aid at all, I'm going to have to drop some of the classes I'm taking in the fall. I'm taking four classes, which is 12 credits because otherwise if you're less than full time, that can also change the financial aid you're receiving it's and if i could just take a loan out i would but i would qualify for a loan because like i said i've been working on all of these financial aspects in life so i won't qualify for a loan and i obviously can't get someone else to do it for me because a lot of people that are close to me are not in a position either to take out a loan so it's just a vicious cycle so my makeup is done now we're gonna wait for my two packages to get here and do a little bit of content creation. And then I'm gonna pack my bags and I'm gonna head to my husband's house. All right, so my Happy Planner order came. So I'm gonna show you that first just because I'm a little bit more excited about it versus the Plum Planner. The only reason I bought the Plum Planner is because not many planner companies have academic planners. So something that starts in June or July, which is what I needed because we're halfway through the month. So if I bought a traditional planner that starts in January, I would be missing out. When I bought the Plum Planner, one there was nothing else that was good at the time but now happy planner brought back their squad squad girl life or squad life something and it is so cute so i'm gonna show you okay so this is the planner um it is a mini because i couldn't justify buying another big size planner and then having two planners so at least this one is a little bit more travel friendly but the artwork is stunning. This is why I love Happy Planner because it just comes decorated already. And for some people in the planner community, they like to customize it instead and do their, their very intricate spreads with stickers and washi tape and all that stuff, which I do have a lot of. Sometimes I just do better with a planner that's already decorated. Here's the opening of it. This is for July. How cute. Then we have August, Sunshine and Happy Times. We have September, Leaves Are Falling, Fall Is Calling. October, super cute. And all these pages in between are also decorated. This is like a weekly spread. And then November, I just wanna read books and take naps, absolutely. And then we have Mary Bright for December, very cute. Then we have this for January. February is time for snowman and snow angels. Honestly, it doesn't really snow that much anymore in February where I'm from, but interesting spring is in the air this is so cute look at that watermelon and then we have this for april some florals then for may we have stop and smell the wildflowers june we have every summer has a story Ugh, i can't this is just the cutest thing ever and that is it and then along with that i got these sticker bundles these are so much fun they're the same theme so we have the classic sticker sheets 460 stickers and then we have the classic sticker sheets this is your year so these complement the planners very nicely they're easy ways of adding something to your spread like a pop of color design there's little boxes to like write things in 
and then I got two notebooks which I'm so glad they came out with notebooks since obviously I can't buy every single planner just because the cover looks cute so this notebook says collect happy memories and it's kind of like a scrapbooky version I love the dogs I love the diversity in the girls that you get that's one of my favorite parts about happy planner and the cool thing about this notebook is that it is divided into three sections so there's the good life then there's be the sunshine and there's some animals there it's so cute and then we have i just want to read books and take naps same 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 and then i got an even bigger one so here's a little size comparison of how much bigger this one is and there's also planners in this size like the big planners it says life is a party with you and the artwork is gorgeous it says create your own adventure and there's the back of it and then the next one is some florals then the last one is live fully in the season you're in which i definitely enjoy that saying so that's everything for my happy planner i think it's so cute i'm so excited i'm probably going to start adding some important dates to the little small one this is the one i'm going to be carrying with me this is going to be my content creation one for them i'm still trying to figure out the system in which we're going to do it but i'll talk about that when i show you the plum planner all right i'm going to open it we have plum paper cover oh this is like a sample so you can see how tough the cover is and how it is rigid and sturdy tear proof and water resistant interesting and then it says here it's a beautiful day to make plans and then it has thank you for your order all that good stuff all right and here she is she is kind of thick all right so let me get her off the plastic. So you're probably wondering, why did you choose a winter like seasonal background? The reason I chose this is because winter is my happy place and there's a little cardinal here and a dog. So it's just like everything I love in one. So I did choose the winter planner, especially as we're entering into summer, I'm gonna need something to look forward to. Something to get me through the days because summer and spring are definitely not my favorite. And yeah, it's very basic. Like I said, the Happy Planner is just so cutely decorated. I did what I had to do. I'm not mad about it. In retrospect, I should have gotten two minis instead of a big one and a small one. Even though this is more comfortable to write in, it's hard to prioritize which one I'm going to take with me. And I know what you're thinking. Well, Janie, you could just put all of them in one. And that's true. But this Happy Planner was so cute. I had to get it. I had to get it. <laughs> Figure it out, though. It's fine. Um, I'm waiting for my computer to restart. It's doing an update. And I sometimes I ignore those updates, but that causes my Final Cut Pro to be very, very slow. And I want to edit as much as I can before I have to go to my husband's house. It is currently 11.46. I'm going to hope that that update starts soon and then I'll get to editing this vlog. And also, I don't know if you can tell. I know you can tell actually because my mom can tell. But I chopped my hair again. So I, I've got, I cut it myself a couple days ago. I couldn't, not a couple days ago, a couple weeks ago, and it's already grown so much. Um, I cut it straight across because I don't have the skills to do layers. And typically I go to a salon, I, I know, but I was having like a mental breakdown. So I started cutting, right? But it turned out fine. It was a very simple haircut, but it was fine. It was straight, it was even. And then I decided to follow a tutorial on, on YouTube and I knew, you already know where this is headed. I started chopping and it just, disasters, mistakes were made mistakes were made so i have a bunch of layers here layers <laughs> that are like not chopped well but my curls are kind of coming back a little see now that i cut it so because i've just been going through it with my hair i'm gonna have to do a whole nother video i don't know if it's because i'm turning 30 in like two months but my 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 texture has changed and this this has happened before my curls get damaged they get very limp they won't they won't straighten see like this like they they won't they're very wavy and super loose and then i cut my hair and all is well again so i cut my hair in january with the same person who cut my hair the year before and it looked amazing and suddenly something happened like my hair just changed and i know that could be age but that's not fair because i'm not 30 yet okay and not that 30 is even old i don't know if there's any scientific but it concerns me because normally a haircut normally chopping off i'm, I'm not someone who holds on to length I, not necessarily i think i look better with with long hair but i always do a big chop because my hair grows back fast and yet this time the haircut didn't solve it and my hair products i've been switching them out again and buying new ones and i'm just spending all this money i know the problem is me so this part's curling but the part that i haven't cut much or cut unevenly is not so i cut more i'm gonna need my husband's help this time so i don't 
mess it up so bad. But yeah, that's my life right now. And if it's not gonna cooperate with me, then I'm gonna bleach the heck out of it. I might as well have very least wavy hair that is a nice color than curls that aren't curling anymore, even though I've been babying them. Canceled my Amazon Prime membership as well as my Kindle Unlimited, but I placed one final order with Amazon um, and I got some pin backing. So my friend at my job has a lanyard full of Pokemon pins and I wanna do the same thing. Yeah, I'm gonna copy him, <laughs> but I wanna do like Sanrio. I don't wanna lose the pins because all my life, like they just, no matter how securely I think I put the clasp on, they fall off. And he taught me that there's these backings that you like, spin and screw into place and it's a better way of securing your pins so i bought a set of 30. And i also got some tweezers for scrapbooking like there's like more precision based tools in order to put stickers down on a paper because sometimes i'll put them down and i'll put them not straight which is not surprising or crooked or bumpy there's these tweezers that a lot of like scrapbookers and planner people use so i figure why not? Also, I got a check from Ebates, or it's called something else now, but Ebates to me just sounds better. It was for eight bucks because I've cut down on my spending online. So it wasn't much, but it's something. Anything is anything at this point. So I'm at Gil's house now. And I got an email from my school saying that I had completed some of the stuff for the orientation, not all of them. So I'm just going to log in now and see what else I have to finish because I thought I got this over with already and apparently not. Oh, I did miss it. Wow. Okay, this is a quiz on a blackboard. Yeah, I'm going to toss it and then I'm going to do all the waters. I'm just quickly doing this one thing. I, I think I realized what I missed. Here's what the quiz looks like. 10 questions. This is Hazel. Always likes to be the center of attention. Normally he plops down while I'm on the computer. So I got 10 out of 10 for that quiz and I finally got the little congratulations. So at least that was the only thing I was missing. Now we move on. I can close this out and relax for the rest of the day. Hi Hazel Basil. Oh, and there's Henry. Hi baby. How we doing? It's like 8 o'clock or something, but I want to take off all my makeup. So I have these little wrist scrunchies that keeps the water from running down your, your hands and your arms, which I really love, like when you're washing your face. So Hazel loves to run into the bathroom, lay in the sink. He's so handsome. Anyway, I figured I'd show you my skincare routine while at my husband's house, except I can't really film here because it's so loud, as you can hear. We're in front of an expressway. But I wanna show you what I use. So I use the cold cream. Use the cold cream, put it all over my face, wipe the excess, and then I wash my face with a cleanser. I usually use the e.l.f. one. Hazel's being cute. Oh wait, there's that cleanser too, right next to him. So this is the e.l.f. daily cleanser with hyaluronic acid and ceramides. It's actually really good. I'm done with that. I'll do the Pond's one. This is just because I was looking for something budget friendly for my husband's house. I don't like to have an extensive oh, stretch of the leg. Sometimes before the Pond's cream, I put some retinol. Anyway, my camera battery is dying and I didn't bring my battery pack charger. That's it for this vlog. Thank you so much if you made it to the end. We'll starting soon. I'm gonna do more child-free content as well. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it and see you later. And Hazel says bye as well.